Hey, what's going on guys? Right now, I'm here by a Hachiko statue and none other than Shibuya Station. With all the good news about Japan's borders, it seems like it's only a matter of time until Japan's borders are fully open for tourism again. So, to get ready for Japan's grand reopening, let me show you 10 things you must try in Shibuya 2022. Without further ado, let's get to it. First up is the famous Hachiko statue and Shibuya Crossing. Hachiko's statue was erected to honor a dog, Hachiko, whose undying loyalty kept him waiting for his owner every day, even nine years after his owner passed away. Although the story is quite sad, the statue itself is a great place for photos and an ideal meeting spot. After meeting your friends at Hachiko, you can head over to Shibuya Crossing, the busiest crosswalk in the world. While you're waiting for the light to turn green, you can take in the sights as the crosswalk is surrounded by impressively tall and bright buildings. Once green, you can walk across in any direction and start your journey of Shibuya. And if you're quick enough, you can stop to take a quick picture in the middle of it all. Once you get your fill of Shibuya Crossing and the Hachiko statue, it's time to see what else Shibuya has to offer. It's sunny, right? it's sunny, oh, let's go, let's go! Next on the list is Yayogi Park, famous for hosting amazing festivals almost every weekend, like the one behind me right now. Let's go check out what else Yoyogi has to offer in Shibuya. <laughs> Located to the northern edge of Shibuya, Yoyogi Park is a great place to relax and take a break from the city to enjoy nature. Although the park is super peaceful, what makes Yoyogi Park so special is the festivals they hold there almost every week. With Yoyogi Park in the middle of Tokyo's biggest city, it's no surprise it would be one of the most eventful spots. This week's event was the Super Yosa Koi Festival, an upbeat dancing competition originating from the Kochi Prefecture. Alright, I don't know about you, but after a nice walk in the park, I could go for some pretty good food right now. And what better food to get when you're in Japan than sushi? If you need a break for lunch and a fan of sushi, then coming to Oobe is a place you definitely need to add to your list. Like a typical conveyor belt sushi restaurant, you're gonna open the tablet provided, find the sushi you want, then hit that order button. Super easy. But what sets it apart from the rest is how it's delivered to your table. They make the sushi, load it onto the belt, and then send it flying down the line towards your table. But unlike other conveyor belt restaurants, it comes to a screeching halt right in front of your table. Along with sushi coming to your table at bullet train speeds, it's also super cheap. All those plates you see there only cost me 2,000 yen. Once you're full and recharged, it's time to get back out there and keep exploring. Next on the list is all the unique shopping malls Shibuya has to offer. Starting off, Shibuya 109 has all types of apparel for women. At the bottom floors, it is pretty mainstream stuff and casual wear. But as you get to the top, you start getting into the more eccentric clothing like maid outfits. Next up, you have the Magnet Mall, which is best known for the One Piece store at the top. Inside, you can get your fill on all sorts of One Piece souvenirs. We also ran into this really cool clothing shop where the owner has jackets embroidered with several different anime characters on them. The last on this list is the Mega Don Quixote. This particular store in Shibuya is the largest Don Quixote in Tokyo. It also ranges from innocent things like snacks, although weird ones like what is this cheese salami pizza? I'm I'm gonna have to pass on that one to questionable costumes and even an 18 and above area. Sorry guys, I didn't want to show any of the 18 and above areas for obvious reasons. That's gonna do it for all the shopping stores and the One Piece store, but if you're into more stuff like anime, stay with us because we got some more to show you. Up next is a store called Mandarake. This shop specializes in classic collectibles and manga, ranging from brand new series like Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia to vintage classics. It also has every genre for the mainstream shonen to the, let's just say, unique ones. I'm sure you all know the ones I'm talking about. They even have Dr. Slump, a manga that was made by Akira Toriyama, the famous manga author who would, after finishing this manga, would go on to create the iconic series, Dragon Ball. Do you see the similarities now? You can get lost in here for hours, exploring the endless bookshelves and discovering the origins of what anime is today. That was a pretty cool experience being able to see all that manga, both new and old, and a couple of them were a little weird, but that's fine. 
since we're already on the subject of retro stuff, let's go check out an izakaya that's got its own vintage twist to it. Still want to get your fill of retro Japan? Well, a dagashi bar is just the place. Here, you can mix your favorite alcohol together with classic Japanese candies. Yep, I said that right. Just like milk and cookies, you can mix your favorite drinks together while trying candy from the 1980s. No, don't worry, this candy is not 40 years old. These candies are made fresh. The rules are simple. Grab a table, order a drink of your choice, and then for 500 yen, you can get all the candy you want for two hours from the candy bar. You can get all types of flavors here, from normal things like marshmallows marshmallows to not so normal ones like onion chips or even shrimp and mayonnaise candy sticks. Uh, yum? Oh, by the way, you can't give your alcoholic drinks to minors. They even made a rule for it. I get a pretty good laugh out of that one because if you think about it, all rules are made for a reason. Now that it's dark outside, this is a perfect opportunity to check out the city's nightlights at Shibuya's newest addition, Shibuya Scramble Square. Next is Shibuya Scramble, one of the newest and coolest places to shop and admire Shibuya Shibuya Skyline. With this place being completed in late 2019, the majority of the world has not been able to see it in person yet. But when Japan reopens, it's definitely a place you don't want to miss. Inside, they have modernized upscale shopping floors if you have the cash for it. They also have nice restaurants and a great tea shop to relax in. But the main attraction of this building is the rooftop known as Shibuya Sky. To get to the top, you have to ascend an elevator that takes you 750 feet high. When you step out of the elevator, you're greeted by a dazzling entrance and a mystical escalator. Once you finish climbing and finally reach the rooftop, you are met with an amazing view of Tokyo's skyline on all four sides. This is a great place to relax, take in the views, and enjoy the breeze. As long as it's still warm outside. Once you're done taking in the views, it's time to explore what Shibuya is best known for. It's nightlife. It's getting late in Shibuya and it's time to experience that famous nightlife. What better way to get the night started than heading to an izakaya and having a few drinks with your best Best friends. And there's no better place to do that than Shibuya's own Chuogae. Along with Shinjuku and Roppongi, Shibuya is well known for its legendary nightlife. And there's no better place to get your night started than Shibuya's dozens of izakayas and Chuogae. Izakayas are Japanese bars that give you a cozy feeling that you're in a bar with your best friends. These bars are very close and personal and make you feel like you're part of some big party. Along with the izakayas, Chuogae currently has a Stranger Things themed restaurant up and running. If you're a fan of the show, you've got to check it out. So you're done with the izakayas, you missed last train, but you're still ready to go. If that's the case, then Shibuya's club scene might be just for you. So, I'm sure you know that Shibuya is famous for its nightlife, but you might not know all the places to go. Well, don't worry, because I'm about to fix that. Behind me is one of the many spots where you can go clubbing and dance the night away until first train. These clubs are the place to go if you want to keep partying until the sun comes up. There are several in Shibuya, but I'm going to highlight a couple of the biggest and best ones to save you a little time. Closest to Shibuya Station are clubs Adam and Harlem, but my personal favorite is TK Shibuya. Shibuya, located more inward near the Mega Don Quixote. Once you pick the club, it's time to party. So, you're having a great night. You met that special someone in the club, or in Chuogai, or you just need a place to crash for the night. Well, right behind me is a solution to both situations. In case you didn't know, a love hotel is a special place where you can either book a standard night, or get a special two to five hour stay, and get some business done that lives up to the hotel's title. If you're having trouble finding one, one, well, look no further, because the mecca of love hotels is located just up the hill from Shibuya Crossing. This special area, known as Hyakendana, has a love hotel at almost every corner you turn, so you almost never have to worry about them being full. All right, that's gonna do it for today. If you found this video useful, help me out and give that like button a click. If you wanna see more useful videos and adventures of Japan, hit that subscribe button. All right, well, until next time, I'll see you then.